Well, hello for you. We're talking about equivalent trig expressions today. Our goal, I understand how the unit circle works and can determine the relationship between trig ratios for various angles. Uh, we're going to start to look at a few different identities today, and these are definitely not identities that you worked with last year. Um, so bear with me as I try to prove these identities to you to start with. So what we're going to do is start with this angle here. So we have this terminal arm. That's what that's called, the terminal arm. And it's, it's rotating through theta here. Now, we are going to let this point right there, yeah, let's make it yellow. We're going to let that point right there be the point AB. And then we're going to put this point on here that is almost the same. Um, it's negative B comma A. And we're going to say that this little gap in here, uh, and not just say, but it is, and I'm going to prove it to you in a second, that this in here is 90 degrees. Um, when we switch around these things and put them in the second column so that our, our x coordinate becomes our y coordinate, and our y coordinate becomes our x coordinate only in the negative sense, that this little thing in here is going to be a right angle. And I'm going to prove that to you by using the slopes, because remember, if they are at a right angle, the slopes of these two lines are going to be at negative reciprocals. So the origin is the point zero, 0, and we're just going to do a quick check of the slopes. So let's call this, um, this line 1, and this one up here line 2, and we're going to check the slopes of these two things. So the first slope we're going to call M1 equals, and of course the formula for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so over here we're going to get um, b minus 0 over a minus 0. So b minus 0 over a minus 0 is quite simply just b over a. And if we check the slope of 2, um, which is still got given by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to write it out a lot because I still get kids, um, students, I shouldn't call you guys kids, uh, by the time you're in grade 12 that still mix these two things up. It's y's over x's, the, the rise over the run, the change in y over the change in x, blah, 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 don't mix those up. y's in the top, x is on the bottom. So we've got a minus 0 over negative b minus 0. So a minus 0 over negative b minus 0, um, which is just going to be a over negative b. So you can see that they are definitely reciprocals of each other, and one is negative and one is positive, so they're negative reciprocals of each other. So that means that this in here is definitely uh, 90 degrees. Okay, so what does that mean to us? Uh, well, that means that if this little thing in here is theta, then this great big thing in here is theta plus 90 degrees because we got to take this part and then add on the 90 degree rotation. So this is theta, this is um, pi by 2 plus theta. We're also going to call this the unit circle, or it is the unit circle. Uh, so we know that on the unit circle that this is actually going to be uh, cos theta, comma sine theta, which means that this over here is cos of not theta this time though because this great big angle in here is theta plus pi by 2 or pi by 2 plus theta, however you want to say it. I'm going to say theta plus pi by 2 and then this coordinate here is going to be sine of theta plus pi by 2. Okay, so I'm going to write these down um, so that you can sort of see, uh, I hope you can kind of see where we're going with this, that A is the same number. Okay, we rigged it that way. When I set it up like this, I picked A down here and I decided to pick this point um, because it had the same value as a when I swapped x's and y's around. Um, so if this is the same number, then that must mean that the cos of theta 
is the same thing as the sine of theta plus pi by 2. So you see we're going to get some identities here if we know what um, theta plus uh, pi by 2 is or pi by 2 plus theta, one or the other. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to write these down. So we get the sine of uh, pi by 2 plus theta, actually let's write it the other way around, theta plus pi by 2, doesn't really matter, theta plus pi by 2 uh, equals a, which equals the cos of theta. Okay. Um, so that means that the sine of pi by 2 plus theta equals the cos theta. When we put it all together, it means that the sine of theta, by theta plus pi by 2, or pi by 2 plus theta, equals the cos of theta. Okay, what else does this mean? Well, if we take a look at b, these two b's are the same number. So if we take a look at the cos of theta plus pi by 2, the cos of theta plus pi by 2 equals negative b, but b over here, b was sine theta, right? So if b is sine theta, then this, this is negative b, so it's going to be negative sine theta. So that means that the cos of pi, theta plus pi by 2 equals the negative sine of theta. Now, lastly, tan, we're not going to use the unit circle for. We're going to use the identity of tan. We know that tan of theta plus pi by 2 is, and you learned this last year, this is the reciprocal, or the, the identity for tan. Tan is sine over cos, so sine um, pi I'm going to write that the other way around. Sine of theta plus pi by 2 over cos of theta plus pi by 2. But let's simplify this because we know that the sine of theta plus pi by 2 from this one up here is just cos theta. So I'm just going to write cos theta. And the cos of theta plus pi by 2 from up here is just negative sine theta. Now, what's the relationship between cos theta and sine theta and sine theta cos theta? Do we know what this is? Uh, well, if sine over cos is tan, then cos over sine is cotan. So this is actually the cotan of theta, but notice that sine is negative, so it's actually the negative cotan of theta. So from all of that little figuring in here, we've got this new identity that the tan, that usually starts with a T, tan of theta plus pi by 2 equals the negative cotan of theta. Okay, so these are some identities and we could do the same thing if we wanted to with um, theta minus pi by 2 which is up here. <clears throat> so this little angle in here is theta and this whole thing is pi by 2. So this angle in here is pi by 2 minus theta. And we could double check that that this thing and this thing add to 90 degrees blah 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 blah. Um, but what we're going to do, I'm just going to ask you here to take my word on it that when you switch around these uh, letters that this is the situation that happens and then you're going to see you're going to see all this again that if we go through the same exact same reasoning as we did before uh, using these points on the unit circle uh, this is what we get and we get the other trig identities that uh, sine pi by 2 minus theta uh, is the same thing as the cos of theta. And from this one, the cos of pi by 2 minus theta uh, is equal to the sine of theta. 
And down here from all of these things in here, we have the tan of pi by 2 minus theta equals the, tan, the cotan of theta. Now you may say, well, there's no negatives going on in here. Last time, in the, in the last set of identities that we looked at, we had some negative action coming on here. Um, we had to slip some negatives in. Why aren't there any negatives this time? Well, there aren't any negatives because of cast rule. Cast rule tells us that C a s t that if the angles are in quad a which all of these things are so we've got first quadrant angles all over the place here everything's positive that's what a means here all are positive so there are no negatives up there okay so we're going to summarize this and you've got your little trig identity and we're going to have a trig identity page and something has happened here i'm not actually getting this to do anything hold on we're going to pause and see what i can do here There, that's better. My tablet had a little brain fart. I had to restart it. So, um, so here's the summary of our trig identities. Now, notice that they're they might be in different order than I did over on the other one, but it doesn't really matter for pi by two plus theta. We can write it as pi by two plus theta, or theta plus pi by two. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of questions. What would we use these identities for? Uh, and we're not going to use these particular identities a lot except for these kind of questions. So this says if sine pi by 10 is equal to negative 0.30901, use this information to find the cos of 3 pi by 5. So how is that going to work? So the first thing we need to do is, is figure out this sine of pi by 10 and the cos of 3 pi by 5. It's definitely easier if we start with what we're given what, or what we want to use and try and turn it in to what we're given. Okay, So start here and we're going to try to turn it into um, pi by 10 somehow. So this says we need to determine an equivalent expression for cos of 3 pi by 5. First we determine what quadrant it's in and then we're going to try to write, write it either as pi by 2 plus theta or pi by 2 minus theta. So what quadrant is 3 pi by 5 in? Well it goes past the half. Now remember this up here is pi by 2. This is the halfway half of rotation is pi by 2. Um, so if it's pi by 2 something like um, 2 pi by 4 would also be half a rotation. So anything that had a number bigger than 2 uh, would go in this quadrant and anything that had a number that's less than 2 would go in this quadrant kind of thing. Um, so if we take a look at uh, 3 pi by 5, well 3 is more than half of 5. So it's going over, right over the, uh, the 90 degree line. So it's over here. Um, so this is 3 pi by 5, which means that we can write it as pi by 2 plus theta. So this little thing in here, we're going to call that theta. And we're going to write this as pi by 2 plus theta. Uh, and here's how we're going to write this down. We're going to say since 3 pi by 5 is greater than pi by 2, this is a second quad angle. This is a Q2 angle. So we're going to say 3 pi by 5 equals pi by 2 plus something. Okay, so here's our pi by 2 and we're adding this theta in here to get the whole rotation which is 3 pi by 5. Now, what is that theta? Well, I don't know, but it's going to be pretty easy to find out because this is just a linear relationship. So to get theta by itself, to figure out what theta actually is, I'm going to subtract pi by 2 on both sides. So I get 3 pi by 5 subtract pi by 2. And 3 pi by 5 subtract pi by 2. If I get a common denominator here, and I'm going to get a common denominator of 10, I have to multiply 5 by 2, so I have to multiply 3, 3 pi by 2 as well. So I get 6 pi. I have to multiply 2 
by 5 to get 10, so I have to multiply pi by 5, so that's going to be minus 5 pi equals theta. Um, so 6 pi minus 5 pi is pi by 10, which is good because I wanted it to look that way. So we can say, therefore, 3 pi by 5 equals pi by 2 plus pi by 10. Because that's what this was. We we're finding theta here. So that means this little angle in here, here is pi by 10. And if you still want to think about it in degrees, that would be 18 degrees, right? Because pi divided by 10 is 180 divided by 10, so it would be 18 degrees in here. So we actually know what this is. Okay, it's 90 plus 18 if you want to work in degrees, or 3 pi by 5. Uh, but we don't want to plug things into the calculator. That's the whole point of this exercise, is that you don't just have to plug it into the calculator. Um, so we're going to use um, the cofunction identity. So I'm just going to shorten it to cofun. Use the cofun ID. We know that the cos of 3 pi by 5 is going to be the same thing as the cos, and I'm just going to write 3 pi by 5 like this, pi by 2 plus pi by 10. But from the cofunction identity, I know that pi by 2 plus theta, let's go up here, pi by 2 plus theta, um, the cos of pi by 2 plus theta, so we're looking cos of pi by 2 plus theta is the negative sine of theta. So this is the negative sine of not theta, pi by 10 was theta, so the negative sine of pi by 10. Now back up in the original question, it told us what the sine of pi by 10 was. It's negative 0.30901, so we want the negative of negative 0.30901, so it's going to be positive 0.30901. Um, so we found it. That's what the cos of 3 pi by 10 5 is without having to pick up the calculator. Now that's a whole lot of figuring, but that's what the cofunction identity is all about. Now the last question we're going to do, if theta lies in the first quadrant and cosecant theta equals secant of 1.45, determine the measure of theta using a cofunction identity. So we're going to kind of do this the same way. Um, if the angle we want lies in the first quadrant, because it actually tells us that, that's, that's really important. If it's in the first quadrant, we can skip that first step that we had before. We know that if it's in the first quadrant over here, it's going to be... We know that this whole thing is 90 degrees, so if this is our theta, or if this is our uh, angle in here, we can write it as 90 degrees minus something. Right? So if this is theta in here, then this in here is going to be pi by 2 minus theta. So that's where we're going to start there. We're going to say the cosecant, that's not cosecant, that's just plain old cos. Um, cosecant of theta can be written as the cosecant Sorry, let's actually have a look at that. How can we write it? Cosecant of theta, we want a pi by 2 minus theta. So let's go back over. So we're looking for cosecant and pi by 2 minus theta. So pi by 2 minus theta and cosecant. Cosecant theta, there we go. Cosecant theta equals the secant of pi by 2 minus theta. So there's one thing that we wanted where we're looking at pi by 2 minus theta. If we'd have had a cosecant and we had written it in the second quadrant angle, we'd be looking at pi by 2 plus theta, so I'd be looking for cosecant over here, and I'd say, okay, then we'd have to bring in some negatives and stuff over here. Okay, um, So let's go back over here. I know that this has to equal the secant of pi by 2 minus theta. So, dot, 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 the secant 
of 1.45 equals the secant of pi by 2 minus theta So since they're both secants, I want to write 1.45 as pi by 2 minus something. So pi by 2 minus theta. And now I'm going to sort of swap these things around and say that theta is going to equal pi by 2 minus 1.45, which is actually 0.12. So theta is 0 0.12. So we have determined the measure of theta. Okay. So one was trying to find the, the secant and one was trying to find, or not the secant, but one was trying to trying to use the cofunction identity to actually get um, get the cos of a number. Uh, the other one was using a cofunction identity to actually find theta. Um, now most of your questions are going to be kind of like this. I realize this is somewhat confusing, um, but just have a go.